Welcome, and we continue today with our sermon series entitled The Downs and Ups of Life. Today, we want to look at the book of Genesis chapter number 50, verses 15 through 21, with the focus on verses 20 and 21. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Verses 20 and 21 again. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I'd like to preach to you from this thought today. Grow through what you go through. Grow through what you go through. In life, it is a reality that we have to often deal with things that are undeserved and unjust. In life, we will encounter people who are jealous, envious. Uh, they are not truth tellers. Uh, they are selfish. But this is life. The life of Joseph, when we look at it today, will help us to understand that in life, when we encounter those situations and potential obstacles that are unjust, undeserved, that we can grow through what we go through. Joseph is the son of the patriarch Jacob, Israel. Jacob had four sets of children, if you will. Uh, there was Leah, his wife Leah. Uh, there were the children born to Leah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and a daughter, Dinah. Seven children, six boys, one girl. Uh, Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, uh, bore to Jacob, Dan, and Naphtali. Bill Zilpah, uh, Leah's handmaid aboard to him, Gad and Asher. But at the last, though Rachel had not been able to conceive, God blessed her and she was able to conceive and she bare unto him Joseph and Benjamin. Uh, Joseph then was special to Jacob because uh, Jacob loved Rachel more than he loved the other wives. And thus he loved Joseph being the firstborn of Rachel more than the other children and even made Jacob, uh, made Joseph a special coat, a coat of many, many colors. Joseph has a dream one day and he tells his brethren of his dream. Uh, in the dream, he says that uh, they were gathering uh, sheaves out in the field and his sheaf stood up and uh, their sheaves stood up and then bowed to his sheaf. If it wasn't enough that uh, Jacob had made Joseph the coat of many colors, Joseph sharing his dream even further angered his brethren. He then dreams another dream where he says the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bow. Uh, and, and thus uh, the brothers uh, are further angered uh, by Joseph. So much so, they hated him that they began to plot against him. Initially, they plot to kill him, but then 
their greed takes over and they decide to sell him into slavery. There are some traders headed towards Egypt and they decide to make a profit. 20 pieces of silver, they sell their brother for 20 pieces of silver. And he's taken then to Egypt. So here is a life lesson number one. Uh, when life gives us a lemon. And I would say that this is a life lemon for Joseph being sold out by your own brethren for profit. He sold uh, to go down into Egypt. Now Joseph is about 17 years old at this time. So he's a young man separated from his family. He goes into Egypt. He's purchased then by an Egyptian officer and captain of Pharaoh uh, by the name of Potiphar. Uh, the Lord, though, is with Joseph. And this is what the Bible says, that while Joseph is in Potiphar's house, God blesses Potiphar's house and field for Joseph's sake. And so the blessing, the anointing, of God is upon Joseph. Though he has been sold out by his brethren, he's now in Egypt working for Potiphar. Well, Potiphar has a wife, Mrs. Potiphar, who lays eyes on Joseph and because he will not uh, fall prey to her, she seduces him, but he refuses. And this is what he said. Notice the words that Joseph uses. He says, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God. Well, Joseph saw that to then be involved with his, his master's wife was wickedness. And ultimately the sin was against God. So now here's a young man far away from home. Um, and yet the godliness in him is very evident. And because he will not comply with her, uh, she falsely accuses him. She waits until a time where he's near, she grabs him. Joseph runs away, he even leaves his cloak, his coat. And uh, she tells her husband that Joseph has mocked her and has uh, done things that Joseph did not do. As a result, Joseph is placed in prison. So here's life lemon number two. He's falsely accused, even though he did the right thing. He refused her. He fled from her. And yet he finds himself in prison. But once again, here's this, this phrase, well, but God is with him. And so he's in the prison and he does so well that uh, they make him the head of all the prisoners there in the prison. Well, the day comes when there are two men out of uh, Pharaoh's entourage, a butler and a baker, who are placed in prison. And while there, they both have dreams. Well, uh, Joseph interprets their dreams. As a result, uh, the butler is going to be restored back to his job. Joseph simply says to, him, to the butler this, when you have been restored, just remember me and speak well unto Pharaoh concerning me. Well, the butler is restored, but guess what? He forgets about Joseph. He forgets the kindness that Joseph has shown toward him. And so here it is, life lemon number three, that you can do well unto folk and they will still forget you. As soon as things are going well for them, they have no recollection of your kindness. For the Bible says two years have passed by. Uh, Joseph still is there in prison. But then an interesting thing happens. Pharaoh has a dream. Uh, the butler now remembers. Oh, yeah, there was that, that fellow in, in prison that interpreted dreams. And so Joseph is summoned to Pharaoh. He's able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Dream essentially means this. There's going to be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. 
And he tells Pharaoh, now you got to start uh, putting up and saving during those years of plenty so that when the time of famine comes, you'll be prepared and others will uh, seek you out to, to, to find grain. And so because of his, uh, the, the wellness in which Joseph uh, goes about his tasks, uh, he's placed over the project. Pharaoh winds up putting him over the project. And the scripture tells us this, Joseph is now 30 years old. So now there's been a 13 year separation from the time that he was sold uh, by his brethren to the point that he's now uh, been elevated 13 years, but God is able, amen. And so Joseph has now been put in charge of collecting uh, in the storehouse for Pharaoh. Uh, he gets married. Uh, and has two sons. So life moves on for uh, Joseph. Well, after those eight years of plenty, remember, or seven years of plenty, remember now the famine has to come. And so now the famine comes. Well, back in Canaan, where his father and brothers are yet, uh, they find themselves in famine also. And so they send down to Egypt to get some grain. As a result of going back and forth, Jacob winds up moving the family down to Egypt because Joseph is there. And Joseph is able to uh, take care of the family. That God has so placed him now that he's able to uh, have provision and make provision for the entirety of Jacob and all of his family. And so Jacob packs up and moves to Egypt, where Joseph is an official there in Egypt. They, Jacob winds up dying in Egypt, but he's taken back to be buried in Canaan land. Well, after the funeral service, they come back to, to Egypt. And this brings us to the text. Joseph's brethren now start thinking, well, while daddy was alive, Joseph didn't, didn't take any step toward us to, to take revenge. But now that daddy is dead, Joseph may have a little get back in him that he want to get back at us for the evil that we did unto him. And so, they get nervous and they, they send word to, to Joseph and, and tell him that, look, we, we, we are your servants. And, and, uh, and daddy said for you to uh, forgive us uh, before he died and left. He, he said that y'all go tell J Joseph y'all sorry and uh, he'll forgive you. So Joseph uh, receives the message and then uh, they come themselves and make their plea. Joseph said this, uh, fear not, for am I in the place of God? See, something there tells us that there's something different about Joseph, that he's learned something in life, and we're about to get there. And so uh, verse number 20, he says this, now as for you, you thought evil against me. Let's not, let's not, uh, uh, be confused about the issue. You thought evil against me. He said, but God meant it under good to bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. Now here's the key. Now therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Or he spake to them in a manner that touched their hearts. So what is it that he did? What is it that, that, that Joseph shows us how you can grow through what you go through, how you can get better and not bitter, how you can take life when it gives you lemons and make some lemonade. Just two things I want to share with you. First of all, uh, Remember that phrase, and God was with Joseph. Uh, it is said prominently 
in chapter 39, verse 2, and chapter 39, verse 21, that after he was sold out by his brethren, and it don't feel good when you get sold out by anybody, but especially your brethren, your kinfolk. And yet, Scripture says this, that God was with Joseph. And so Joseph maintained a positive outlook, even though things had gone against him. He gets there into uh, Egypt. Potiphar purchases him. He goes to work for Potiphar. And then Potiphar's wife falsely accuses him. And yet, once again, when he head, he's headed to prison, the scripture said this, and God was with him. Judge, I believe that this then is a, is a word to us today because the scripture says this, that when Jesus Christ was to be born, that the scripture tells us that his name would be Emmanuel. God with us. It makes a difference when God is with you. It makes a difference when the Lord is walking with you and talking with you. So don't just speed past the fact that the scripture tells us in Genesis over and over. Every time that Joseph had to face life when life was not uh, fair, when the situation was undeserved, and yet... The Lord was with him and it made a difference. It allowed him to grow through what he was going through. The second example that I want to share with you is the fact of how he named his children uh, down there in Egypt that were born to him. Well, the scripture says he had two sons that were born to him. The first son was Manasseh. The second, Ephraim. The name Manasseh means God hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Notice the firstborn is named Manasseh. God has made me to forget my toil and all of my father's house. Look, what stuff happened back there? God has let me, allowed me, strengthened me to let it go. And that's a word to us today, church. If you're going to go grow through what you go through, there's something you just got to learn. Let it go. You, you can't get to where you need to be if you're carrying excess baggage and excess weight. And so the naming of his first son, Manasseh, God has allowed me to forget my toil. And all my father's house, letting go of those negative things of the past. And here's how I believe that, you know, he let it go. You know, even after he uh, was established uh, by Pharaoh uh, to oversee the grain collection in those first seven years of plenty, at any time, Joseph could have said, you know, I'm going to take a vacation and I'm going to go back to Canaan land and I'm, I'm going to see what's going on with what they're doing in Canaan land. No. Joseph didn't do that. He said this through his first son named Manasseh. The Lord has helped me to forget it and move on. Then his second son is born. Ephraim. Ephraim means God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Well, wait a minute. Uh, he forgot about the toil of his father's house and yet he recognizes that even where he is now, it ain't easy. It hasn't been easy. It wasn't easy to be false accused by uh, Potiphar's wife. It, it wasn't easy to be left in prison and forgotten about. Look, where I am now has been a toil, not just where it came from, but there's some struggle where I am now. And yet he named that boy Ephraim. God has called me to be fruitful in a place that has tried to afflict me. Do you hear that today, church? God is able that you can grow through what you go through so much so that even those things that are trying to afflict you, God is able. And I heard somebody say glory and hallelujah. 
You got to learn how to grow through what you go through. Yes, Joseph affirms, I'm not going to just nourish you, but I'm going to nourish your little one. Do you see a heart of love there? Do you see a heart of forgiveness? Do you see that while the brothers think that he going to hold a grudge forever, Joseph said, look, I'm past that. God has done too much for me, for me to be holding grudges and for me to try to live constantly in the, in the negativity of the past. But he said, not only am I going to take care of y'all, but I'm going to take care of all your children too. Praise God and hallelujah, church. So you got to learn to grow through what you go through. You got to learn how to let our trials and our troubles be our fertilizer. You know what fertilizer is? Fertilizer is a material that's uh, placed in the soil that provides nutrients essential for plant growth. That's, that's what a fertilizer does. Our troubles, our trials can be our fertilizer when we learn how to grow through what we go through. Fertilizer. You know one of the best fertilizers that, that is known and farmers know this is manure. Now, we get a little squeamish when we talk about manure. You know, the Bible in various passages speaks of it as dung. And yet, when we, in our trials of life, our troubles of life allow that which is on the surface undesirable, but yet it can have a benefit to us. And so we got to learn how to grow through what we go through. We got to learn how to get better and not bitter. We got to learn how to take the lemons and make lemonade. In closing, I don't know if Joseph could sing or not, but if he could and if he could sing a song today, he might tell us in the words of that old hymn of the church, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else can heal all our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Listen to this. No friend like him is so high and holy. And yet no friend so meek and lowly. No, not one. Listen to this. There's not an hour that he is not near us. You got to know that today. Whatever you're going through, know that the Lord is near you. He's with you. God with us. There is not an hour that he is not near us. Nor a night so dark. But his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Listen to this in closing. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. Do you hear that? Jesus knows all about our struggles. He knows when things have happened that are undeserved, unjust, by folk who try to do you harm and afflict you. And yet, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. Question, will you follow him? There's not a friend. There's no other friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. God bless you. God keep you in my prayer. Continue on. That God will strengthen you. And that you learn to grow through what you go through. God bless you. God keep you. Until we meet again.